welcome to our online church experience. We're so glad you're here. The service is about to kick off, but before we do, I'm just popping into your screens to give you some quick tips on how to best navigate your experience. If you're joining us on a laptop today, to the right of your screen, you will see a live chat room where everyone who is watching online can pop in and say hello. So why don't you pop in, say hello. You've just got to put in a quick nickname so we know who you are, but jump on and say hi to everyone. Down the bottom right corner of the video screen, you will see a button that says live prayer. If you click on this, you will be taken into a private one-on-one -on -one chat room with one of our team ready to pray with you. If you are new here or visiting for the first time, we would love to say hello to you. So jump up to the top panel on your screen, click on new here, fill out the form and one of our team will be in contact with you shortly. To participate in giving during our online service, you can jump up to the menu at the top of your screen, click on giving, and that will take you to our online giving options so you can participate during the service. Hey kids, to access your online kids program, jump up to the menu at the top of your screen, click on kids, and you will find what our amazing Kids Church team have prepared for you, which is actually accessible 24 seven. So anytime during the week, jump up, Click Kids and you will find your online service. If you would like to connect with us further or let us know that your details have changed, jump up to the top menu, click Connect with us, fill out the form and one of our team will be in contact with you shortly. If you are joining us on a mobile today, you will notice that under our online service is the live chat room, which you can feel free to participate in. If you click on the live prayer button under the online service on your screen, you'll be taken to a one-on-one -on -one private chat room with one of our team who is ready to pray with you. This will automatically open on your screen, but to simply navigate back to the online chat room with everyone who is watching from the service, under the online stream, just click chat and you'll be back. If you are new here, would like to find your online giving options or find the kids program or simply connect with us further, just jump up to the top left of your screen, click on the three bars and you will find those options ready for you. Thanks so much for joining in on my brief tour on how to navigate the online church experience. It's about to begin, so quickly go grab a tea, find a comfy spot on the couch and enjoy the service. part of the team here at C3 Lane Cove. Yeah, C3 Lane Cove is a spiritual community centered around Jesus. Yeah, and we're really excited to have you join us here at 10 a.m. Um, if you're new, uh, we'd love for you to connect with us. Um, there should be an option coming up on the screen right now, a connect card. 
for you to jump in and click a link on. Yeah, or you can just go into the chat, put in your name and come and say hello and we'd love to have a chat with you there. Yeah, we've got a great service ready for you lined up. Um, but this is also a great opportunity to invite somebody. We've got links popping up into the chat or on different social media platforms which you can just copy and paste. Invite your friends, invite your family, invite your neighbor, invite somebody that you don't know. There you go. It's a great opportunity and it's a great morning to be in church. Yeah. Well, we're going to go into a uh, prayer request real quick. Uh, we as a church love to gather together and pray. So just join me in prayer as we pray over the yes. people in awesome. our community. Thank you, God, that you are good. Thank you, Jesus, that you are working through and each yes, one of our lives right now. Lord, we just bring forward every prayer request right now to you. Lord, you are a God who answers our prayer. You partner with us. And so we pray uh, your blessings upon each person where people need you, Lord. Let, let there be a divine encounter with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Hi Church, we're going to worship the Lord now with our tithes and offerings. And many of you have already given online, but the opportunity to give is coming up on the screen right now, and there's all, you can give via our Give menu. You know, we just had a bunch of birthdays in our house, and whenever you have birthdays, it makes you ponder the question, what would the person I'm giving the gift to really like? What's What's going to make them happy? What's going to really connect with them? And a good gift should really require some devising, some thinking, some discussion. What's the person into? What's the person passionate about? What fires them up? When we receive a good gift, we often say, I do, oh, that was really thoughtful. Good gifts require thought. They require, they require focus. They require our time. And focus on the person that we're giving to. Isaiah 32 8 says that, that a generous man devises generous things, and by generosity he shall stand. In other words, he thinks about, he contemplates his generosity. What about the, a gift for the King of Kings? What is the King of Kings into? Well, Hebrews 11 tells us that he's into faith, that faith pleases God. So I'd just like to challenge us today. What generous things are you devising? How are you using your treasure, your time and your talent for the King of Kings? Because the promise from God, from that Isaiah verse, is that a generous person will stand under all sorts of pressure. And we're under a lot of pressure right now with everything that's going on. But if we can remain generous, we can remain focused on the King of Kings with our giving, the promise is that we'll be able to stand through these times. God bless you today as you give. I've been going to C3 Link Cove since I was born. Um, yeah, I've been raised up there. In like year seven, year eight, I had quite bad mental health and um, at the time I had a lot of circumstances that I don't know, I couldn't see any way out of or how I could handle them and yeah I didn't have those really good um, strong relationships that you know you kind of aim for um, and yeah I like wasn't really anchoring my um, faith or like going to the right places for support. My experience sort of seeps into like Almost every interaction I was having, every experience I'd go through, every um, thing I'd like, everything I'd try to do at school. I um, sort of had exhausted a lot of other options, like, yeah, and hadn't really found proper help in what I'd tried. Um, and so then I was like, okay. Like the idea of going to God was in the back of my head, but it, like I really hit a low point and then I was like, oh, praying, that thing that I learn about. Um, I was in my room um, late at night, I couldn't sleep because my thoughts were so bad. Um, and yeah, I was just sort of like, God, what do I do, what do I do? And then there was just like this voice in my head saying like, you're safe you safe. I prayed and then just felt safe despite my thoughts which yeah was something really profound for me in that moment like I hadn't felt safe with my thoughts for months even um, and I think that just really drove a huge passion for God in me and that's really something that hasn't ever stopped. Um, from then I sort of yeah, I started relying a lot on my youth leaders and praying with them and, you know, getting through these thoughts and like knocking them down with God and um, I had to keep going back and developing a lot of habits to retrain my thoughts to be obedient to God. Um, one that I don't know where it is, but um, I think it's in the Psalms, but it just says, um, you will life like talking about God which I think for me just carries so much meaning because with God like you have no sense of um, 
death being an issue or um, yeah, anything being able to form a weapon against you, even though it's such a simple verse. So my life now is really um, centered around God and I haven't had depression at all since year 10. Um, and I'm more peaceful than I was even as like a little kid before going through like any hardship, which I think is something that helps me a lot, um, you know, battling whatever I go through. I think it's this really incredible peace that you can find um, from sort of, not necessarily in the absence of circumstances that are hard, but um, just from, you know, pressing into God again and again when things get hard.
Lord bless you. Hi, church. Hi. Hope you enjoyed that worship space. Uh, we have a great message coming up in just a moment. Uh, in the meantime, here we are. Yeah, this time right. we're not on the couch. No. How are you going, dear? <laughs> I'm going great, but hey, it's June. Uh, how did it? What happened? It's I can't freezing. How fast. It is so cold. Winter is definitely here. Yes. Um, and I'm loving how things are starting to open up a little mm. again. Like our favourite coffee place we go to on a Monday, had a few more people. Yes. And, and it seems that we are coming through this in Australia mm. definitely mm. reasonably. Okay, I still really want to see people, sweetie. I miss people. Yes. Nothing like the human touch. That's right. Is there? That's right. Um, and I've been really loving opening our home up. A little mm. bit more, having some people around for lunch, up to five people or whatever. We'll have to figure That's out been... who we're inviting next. I know. Right? <laughs> um, and we can be so inventive and creating, yeah. creating, creative, I should say, and adding people into our online church experience together. Like, you know, the broadcast and brunch. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Great, way to, great yeah. way to reach out to people. Yeah, yeah. cool. Now, I think you have a new poem. I do. And so what's it called? It's called Oasis. Because I was reflecting on this latest, this whole COVID season has been a season of great dryness mm, mm. and a time where we feel a bit disconnected and, you know, like a desert is dry and our mm. oasis is obviously mm. a spring of living water in the desert. And uh, obviously Jesus is that for us, right? So yep, let's go. Here it is. I am your oasis. I am water that's alive. I am with you, I am near you, I hear your every cry. Bring your burdens, bring your sorrows, cast the lot down at my feet. Come with me to green pastures, to feed on meadows sweet. Though the hills you climb are rocky and the roads you walk are rough, stick close to me and you will see, my friends, I am enough. The flowers, they don't toil and the birds, they do not fret. I've clothed them with such beauty mm. and their needs I don't forget. Mm. So watch them and remember how much more than you are loved. My eyes are ever on you. Take my hand and rise above. Fantastic. That's so good. I love that ending, rise up. Yeah. Um, that's always what God's after that's right. in us. So what's coming up, church? Last week um, the New South Wales government said we can – uh, now have meetings of 50, finally. Um, so we will be planning um, how and when that works for us once we get council approval. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, it's June. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, it, we're still going with on the, our online church experience That's it. and we need to keep on practicing um, doing church together. Yeah. Um, why not reach out to one or two others yeah. and, and do um, the whole thing that I said, which is yeah. broadcast and yeah. brunch. Um, and help some people as well who, you know, if you know someone who doesn't have um, super tech ability. Or access to technology. Yeah. Even, um, in some Great. cases. You yeah. can have them around. So exactly. add, add one or two to, to your family experience in the morning. Um, so we're going to pray uh, in just a second, but is there anything, sweetie, that you wanted to share today? Look, I was just thinking about this season and what I'd like to see um, happen um, as we as we move out again and and into um, open gatherings. And Psalm 40 um, says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Yeah. Um, it says a whole bunch of other things as well. But I just, just thinking about that, I waited patiently for the Lord. Mm. Um, that means I can wait impatiently. <laughs> Correct. Um, which I'm pretty good at, actually. I think <laughs> we're all a little good at waiting are. very impatiently. Yeah. What is it, eight seconds before, if you don't get the download, you... you the average person waits eight seconds yeah, and then right. goes on to the next thing. Yeah, right. Um, I can wait without also without realizing that it's the Lord I'm waiting on. Yeah, right. um, just think about, you know, if you're waiting for someone really important, you tend yeah. to have a little bit more patience. Sure. Um, we're not waiting for the coffee machine to finish. <laughs> um, True. I, I personally am not a great waiter mm. um, because you've seen me drive in traffic. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We're all different. <laughs> when that red light, you know, when that person's going slow at the red light. Um, yeah, that's yeah. not something you find easy. Yeah. Um, I think how we pay attention to God uh, in this season of online really matters. Yeah, that's um, true. You've got to actually take extra time to just give God your full attention. Mm -hmm. um, you can't give God the hurry up. That's right. Um, 
And I believe at this time that God is shifting many things yeah. globally. Yeah. Um, and I also think he's trying to shift many things personally. Mm. So I'm really hoping for myself and for us mm, mm. and for all of our people and for all the churches actually mm. that we will encounter Jesus in a in a really fresh way Beautiful. in this season. Fantastic. Um, but yeah. will men paying close attention to him? Sure. Okay. Mm. So let's pray. Mm. God, you are so good. I pray. Yes that you would help us in this season, which is so strange and difficult. Yes, God. Lord, that there are some things that never change. Jesus, you never change. Mm. Lord, you never change. And I yeah. pray that you would help us mm -hmm. to walk with you at your pace, not ahead yes, of God. you, not behind yes, you, God. but with you. Help us to yes, keep God. in step with your Holy Spirit. You know, last week was Pentecost Sunday. And Lord, yeah. help us to continue Amen. to keep in step with your Holy Spirit. Bless every person watching. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See. Hi Church, welcome again to our online experience. It's great to see you. Can't wait to see you in the flesh at some stage. Um, I want to talk to you today about spiritual development and something in particular that relates to spiritual development that I think will help you. But let's jump right in. Um, Romans 12, 1 to 3. I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God. I say to you through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, have a clear sense of who you are, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. You know, we human beings are critically important to God, not just important, but loved by God, special. Um, we are sacred to God. Um, that's why God became one of us, um, because we're, we are the creature that he made that, that uh, is most critical to, who, um, to what he's doing in the world. And God has great purpose in humanity. We see it here in this text. He wants to transform us. He, he, is, he has the power to transform us. He's going to give us new thinking. Um, he, he, wants, he wants to us to understand and prove and work out his good, acceptable and perfect will. And to pour supernatural grace uh, into our world, into our lives, so that we become authentically human. Um, that, you know, we talk, talk about being authentically human, but to be authentically human is to be like Jesus. That's a challenge, isn't it? Jesus died, in other words, for something absolutely huge, to achieve something absolutely huge in us, which is very encouraging because we're not there yet, but we're on that journey. But there is one thing here in this, in this text um, which all of this depends upon. And it, that is this, it depends on whether we choose to give ourselves to God. It depends on whether we choose to become living sacrifices, as it says in this text. Um, you, you, I, I urge you to present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, and then this stuff is going to come into our world. You know, life has sacrifice uh, in its very DNA. Um, a tree, for instance, sacrifices its fruit or its seed in order to produce new trees. Um, a, a woman, and all the girls know this, um, a woman sacrifices nine months of her life and quite a painful birth um, to, in order to bring a child into the world. Uh, our whole race depends upon the sacrifice of women. Uh, incredible. Hallelujah to the women. Um, parents, we sacrifice our lives to grow up our kids, to help our kids to become adults. Um, you always give a lot more than what you get back, which is great because it's a sacrifice and it's beautiful. Um, to forgive people, you have to sacrifice your rights. To, to win people over, you often have to sacrifice your pride um, to, 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 to be a peacemaker. There's a thought for what's going on in America at the moment. To get a deposit, uh, you have to sacrifice your holidays. To, to get a great career, you have to sacrifice study. Everyone sacrifices all the time to get worthwhile things. In fact, nothing worthwhile can be built without sacrifice. 
um, giving of ourself to something. Now, sacrifice is also at the heart of the Christian message, the gospel. The gospel is about God making a sacrifice. It's about God giving himself for the sake of the world, himself for the sake of us. In the center of history is this moment uh, on the cross where, where Jesus offers himself as a sacrifice in order to change the world, in order to, to, to create a breakthrough, in order to do all sorts of things that will enable us to experience everything God has for us. It's a place of sacrifice. The word sacrifice actually is related to the word sacred. You can see it, sacred sacrifice. It means to be holy or set apart for God. In a secular world, nothing is sacred. That's a saying. Nothing is sacred. But in God's world, it's different. There is sacrifice. In God's world, sacrifice actually matters because it does something. God says, I want you to be living sacrifices. Something happens in sacred giving. And I want to suggest to us today that the growth or the divine power that comes to us is in the giving. It's in the giving. It's in the, the practice of giving. So let's explore that today and find out what and why this works. First of all, um, being living sacrifices means that giving ourselves is not an attempt to get God to do something, but it is actually a response to God to something God has already done. Notice in Romans 12, 1 here, it says, I urge you by the mercies of God. In other words, I urge you by something that God has already done to offer yourselves. You know, when people ask me, you know, Simon, what, why on earth do you believe in God? How can you believe in God? I actually have quite a, few, a, a lot of very intelligent and reasonable reasons for believing in God. For instance, you know, we can say, for instance, that everyone knows that human beings are more than physical. I mean, some people say they're not, but actually the way we act, the way we are, the way we respect one another, clearly we know that human beings have a soul and there's a part of us that is spiritual. Also, life is ridiculous ridiculous if it, it has no meaning. If we're just here by accident and, 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 and there's no purpose to life whatsoever, well, everything we do in life has purpose. We need purpose. We can't live without purpose. Right now, being in COVID-19 lockdown has felt purposeless. Um, and we've been unable to pursue the purposes in life, and that's been bad for us. And another reason is if we all die and that's it, then bad people get away with murder. It doesn't make any sense uh, that, that, that there's no eternal justice. Those are some good reasons to believe. But you know what my big reason for believing is? It, those things are important, but nothing like this one. The main reason that I think we should believe is that God sent Jesus into the world and that Jesus is real and true. What do I mean by that? I mean that faith is a response to what God has already done in Jesus Christ. Faith is not something we sort of scramble about in the dark trying to make happen, but rather it's a response to something God has done, a response to the mercies of God. God has done something in Jesus Christ already. He moved first. And you know what the truth of the matter is? That God always moves first. God is always seeking to move you. He's always seeking to come and do something. He's always seeking to move first. And our faith is a response to what God is doing. 1 John 4.19 says this, We love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. Have you ever noticed how beautiful it is when someone does something for you that is uh, that you never, ever expected, but it was awesome and good? We were, Mandy and I um, were on an anniversary date some years ago uh, at a certain place, and, uh, and we met a, a friend from church there, and um, we had our meal and everything and drank some wine and had a lovely night. And then we went to pay... Um, and the, the, the cashier said, don't worry about it. Your friend paid for you. And Mandy and I were blown away. We were just so thankful, so excited, not just to this person, but we were excited because that sort of thing is precious because it's exactly like God. It's exactly like what God does for us. That, that's what grace is. It's when someone does something for you that you never expected. And, and it's surprising and beautiful. And it's like a window 
on how God does things. And that inspires me to then be generous like that to other people in my life. God always goes first. That's what grace is because giving is a response to what God has already done. I urge you by the mercies of God, offer yourselves. The second thing I want to say to us today is that giving ourself is reasonable worship. It's reasonable and it's worship. You present your bodies, he says here, Romans 12, 1, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, the word service here in the original language actually means not just any kind of service, but rather service to God, service of worship. In the New American Standard Version, it actually says this. It says, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship, your spiritual service of worship. Now, I have a question for us uh, this morning, um, and that is, why does worship so often feel so unreasonable? What do you mean, Pastor Simon? Well, you know that awkward moment when we, when you're, you're in a, a group of people and we say something like, let's worship or let's pray, let's give, um, let's, let's engage with God right now. Um, it's not like an automatic car where that just happens automatically. It's like you have to make a gear change. And it's like I just find with, with me that often my gears are a bit sticky. Um, sometimes I'm trying to get out of first and it, and it just won't budge. And, 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 and I really, or, or I drop the clutch and, and stall the car in the middle of, of trying to shift into that worship moment. Um, the, it, it always happens to me with prayer that I have to make a shift, um, like an internal shift. Why do we find it so hard to change gears uh, to engage with God? It seems to require quite a bit of effort and work. And sometimes people think, well, it shouldn't. Uh, it should just be easy. But I'll give you some reasons. The first one is this. Relating to God is not something most people do naturally. It's not something that we're born with. It's not something that we find easy or natural. Um, you, you're not born uh, in a relationship with God. You have to be born again into a relationship with God. Um, we know how to drive a car. Those of us who drive a car, it comes naturally now. Um, we know how to use a computer. Even, even some of us are a bit technically challenged, but we're learning how to do Zoom and we're learning how to do all sorts of things in this season. We know how to go and get the groceries. We know, we know how to pay the electricity bill. We know how to do all, all these things. But how do you relate to God? Sometimes we're not so sure how to do that or how to do that in a deeper way. And that's worship. Where do you start? The second reason here is that worship means getting vulnerable with God. It means really getting honest and opening up, really um, letting go of some things, getting very honest with God about where we're at and where he's at. And that's why I think sometimes people go real quiet in the presence of God and don't know what to say because they're a bit overawed by, um, by it all. You know, it's a bit like... Um, getting into your speedos at the beach. Uh, most men wear board shorts. Of course, if you're in the Olympics, it's fine to wear speedos. You want to go fast, but suddenly when you're on the beach, uh, you, you're not in your speedos. And then, then there's the speedo limit. You know, how far away from the beach do you need to be before being in your speedos is not a good idea. Um, um, people say, well, I'm never doing that. Um, I'm just using this as an example that, that, that getting in the presence of God can feel risky and, and it can make us feel shy because we're dealing with God. We're dealing with a person who knows us intimately already and how do we engage with him there? But there's a third reason why worship feels unreasonable. Now, the Bible says here that it's our, it is reasonable, but there's a third reason why it feels unreasonable and that is that all worship is actually giving. The act of worship means that we cannot worship without giving something. It always involves some form of giving. And we find that really hard because of the reason that it says here in the text, which is that we are to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by a new mind which comes from God. And in the world, what we have been taught is this, that whenever it comes to giving something we ask the question what am i getting and when you worship god you don't ask the question what am i getting 
You because you're coming to God not because of what you're getting, you're coming to God because He's God. And that's what you're getting. In fact, you probably don't know what you're getting because God is so immeasurable, so vast, so unknown to us that we have to it's like it's like it's like having your first kiss. You want to do it, but you just don't know what you're getting. <laughs> Believe me, I remember that moment. Actually, to be honest with you, the word worship actually means to kiss towards. So it's kind of vulnerable. But all worship is giving. So why should we jump in to being living sacrifices? Well, the third reason is this. Giving ourselves creates holy space. It creates, it creates a space for God. Romans 12, 1 again says, Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. Holy, acceptable to God. Do you know, you know, sometimes in the Bible, one word can say a lot. And sometimes we can jump over one word. But this one word, holy, means a lot here. What does it mean, holy and acceptable to God? Well, holy has to do with God's presence. Holy has to do with God's character, who he is. It means special. It means unique. It means uniquely divine. It means something that is something that is holy is something ha that has been separated to God's use. Uh, it's a person who's been separated to God's purposes. Holy. It's not just common, but it's holy. And a sacrifice or offering ourselves to God creates sacred space. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that it creates sacred space inside of us, in our hearts. So when I, when, I do, when I offer myself to God, when I offer something to God, the way that I know that I'm worshipping is that I've created sacred space inside myself. The Bible says, Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? You're the temple of the Holy do you not understand that human beings are actually the space that God inhabits when they have a relationship with him and that God wants to inhabit each human being? So therefore, we are special to God and he fills us with something. It also creates space amongst us that when we gather together, even as we're gathered separately in our own houses at the moment because of this isolation and lockdown, that as we gather in our places that we're gathering, but we're gathering in a holy way and that God is amongst us as we gather. You know, you can do that in an unholy way. You might, you know, I don't want to embarrass anyone this morning, but maybe you're in the kitchen and you're also cooking bacon and eggs at the same time as you're listening to this. And at the same time, you've got the laundry on and you're running outside to, to find out whether or not the, the spin is finished. Well, what you're doing, it's good to be in church, but... but that, that space is not holy to God because it's not wholly dedicated to him. It, it, you aren't, we aren't giving him our full attention in that moment so that he can't come to us and speak to us in the same way that he could if we were fully attending to him. And sacred space, being, um, being living sacrifices also creates sacred space in the world. The, the very act of a church gathering and giving themselves as, a, as living sacrifices does something in the world. What happens when a holy community becomes living sacrifices? Well, I'll tell you what happens. God comes near and presences himself in that community. And that's what he wants to do. And that's what Jesus wants to happen. That, that, that's kingdom of God stuff. That's God um, being in a community of people and then touching the community around that people because people set aside time, space and everything else in order to worship him. It's reasonable and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it's kingdom of God stuff. Now, we cannot um, just say, some of us might ask the question, well, aren't I already holy just because I believe in Jesus? You are holy because you believe in Jesus. That's the beginning of holiness. But holiness must also have an expression. In fact, it, holiness must also be practiced. Um, notice 
in this text, it says we are to be living sacrifices. Now that's a present continuous verb, which means that God can means that this practice is a pre- present continuous practice of of worshiping God and of 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 putting our faith into practice by giving ourselves to Him. How do we practice holiness? Simple, really. We give God our time, we give God our treasure, and we give God our talent. We give God ourselves. That's that's ourselves. We give God our time, we give God our treasure, we give God our talent. On a continual basis we do that. We make it part of a lifestyle. And and when we do that, God is God says this is acceptable, this is pleasing to me, this is worship. And as a consequence, it, it earths something in us as individuals and as a community. We get, transformation starts to take place. A renewed mind starts to take place. The will of God starts to be revealed to us. And the grace of God comes into our, into our lives and into the community. Now I said at the beginning that all these things, transformation, revelation, filling, they all hinge on this one thing. Will we give ourselves sacredly and sacrificially to God? Now let me finish with this. Um, <clears throat> Jesus said something really significant um, before he went to the cross and gave himself for us. He said something that's completely countercultural to the world and to what we've been taught. Um, he said something when I first read it. Um, I thought, um, this is completely backwards. He said, whoever desires to save his life, this is Matthew 16 verse 25, Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. In other words, what, is, what are most of us trying to do in life? We're trying to find a life. We're trying to find a purpose. We're trying to, find, um, we're trying to live effectively. We're trying to live in a way that's worth living. And Jesus said, if you want to do that, if you want to find your life, he said, then here's one thing you need to do. You need to let go of your life. Now that's completely backwards because we've been taught um, since we were little that the way to find your life is to just get more and more and more and to focus more and more and more on ourselves. And he'd just been telling Peter at this stage, I have to go to the cross. I have to go to the cross. And in the middle of this, Peter says to Jesus, I mean, can you think, can you imagine this? Peter's saying to the Son of God what he needs to do. He says, Going to the cross, Jesus, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard in my entire life. Now, why would Peter say that? The reason why Peter says that is because Peter is just like you and I. (laughs) I love Peter. He gives me some courage. He gives me some comfort that he could make so many mistakes, mess up so much. And yet Jesus still had him on his team and as his lead guy. Um, He's, Peter is holding on so tightly to his world and to, to his perspective of what he wants Jesus to do for him that he doesn't realize that the truth is he needs to let go. He needs to let go. Um, Jesus let go of what he had. And what happened when he let go of what he had on the cross, when he went to that cross in obedience? He didn't have to go there. He didn't have to do it. Could have got out of it many, many times, but he went anyway. And why did he do it? He did it because God met him there and God met him there for you and I. Now I want to encourage you this morning that you can meet Jesus. I want to encourage you if you're following Jesus to remember that in order to keep moving forward with Jesus, you need to let go of yourself because Jesus let go of himself for you. And the way forward is not to hold on to yourself but to let Jesus be Jesus in your world. And as, you, as we are living sacrifices and as we trust God and, and give ourselves our time, our talent and our treasure, give ourselves to God, then God will show up in our world. That's what it means to take up your cross. It means to do what Jesus did, to meet God by giving ourselves to him as living sacrifices. Why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, right now, right here, uh, in every house, in, uh, in every place, in every, for everyone who's listening, I know you're speaking to people. I know that you're speaking quite simply to us and saying, I love you. I want to work in you. Will you let me? Will you give me yourself? And if that's you this morning, I I want to encourage you. You can can pray a prayer in just a minute. I'll lead you in that prayer. And you can say, Lord, I want to give myself 
to you, would you come into my life? If you're already a Christian, I want to encourage you. Let God be God in your world and give yourself again to him. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that was a powerful message, wasn't it? This morning, right where you are, perhaps you need to connect with God. Perhaps you've been close to him in the past, but recently you've disconnected yourself. Perhaps you're sitting there and you've never had a connection with God. Well, I have great news for you. God is much closer to you than you've realized. In fact, all it takes is a small reaching out on our behalf in prayer, and he will come and fill your life with his presence. He will wash you clean, and he'll help you start a brand new journey with him. If that's something you'd like to do right now, then we can pray together. It's a really simple prayer. It's an easy prayer. You can pray it just like this. Lord, I give you my life. Help me to follow you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, we would love to connect with you. We want to help you take some next steps in following Jesus. So you can just click the button down in the chat to tell us that you raised your hand or connect with us through the connection card. And we'll take you out for coffee or give you a phone call and help you in your new life with Jesus. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Wasn't that great, Jess? Oh, such an awesome message yeah. for everyday life. Um, feel free to share the link. It should be coming up on the screen. We'd yeah. love for you to take time going through it by yourself and taking down notes. Yeah, you can send that to your friends, to your relatives, to anybody that you know who'd really appreciate watching our service. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. Look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye. Bye.